The Batman's greatest nemesis, the Clown Prince of Crime, has been around for nearly 80 years. And now, he is even taking centre stage in his own movie. The Joker is now fully established as one of the all-time great pop culture villains, but there was a time when he was treated more like a toothless prankster than the terrifying psychopath we know today. But he managed to get his edge back, thanks to a fish. A laughing fish. Like, I took the character from zero to 60, and since then, people have cranked it up to six million. The Joker made his debut in Batman number one way back in April 1940, the Cape Crusader himself having first appeared the year before. The inspiration for the character came from the 1928 silent horror movie The Man Who Laughs, starring Conrad Veidt as the disfigured hero. Stills of the movie could easily be mistaken for some early adaptation of the comic books, complete with pompadour hair and terrifying smile. The Joker arrived pretty much fully formed in Batman number one. He is an unrepentant murderer sporting a white face and green hair and armed with a lethal gas that leaves his victims with a haunting grin. When Batman was first invented, um, the first year was a very pulp oriented, hopefully that makes sense in yep. a British context. That's comic book veteran Steve Englehart, who's written the adventures of nearly every comic book hero you can think of. Very dark, lots of, you know, vampires for villains, uh, things like that. But the, but the crowning glory for all that was the Joker. Um, and the Joker in those days was a homicidal maniac in, in a 1939 sort of way. Um, he killed people indiscriminately. But that did not last long. There was this sense in the original Joker of being a scary, dark, pulp character, which had been lost ever since they made him, made everything family friendly and came up with Robin and, you know, built this empire. By the 1950s, Batman had lost all his pulp edge. He started going into space. He got a dog sidekick. He was even turned into a baby. There was little room for a psychopath clown in this era. He was a funny villain. I mean, not necessarily slapstick humorous, but I mean, his funny face and so forth was used just for fun. I mean, he didn't have, and he had elaborate plots perhaps, but there was no menace to it. There was no danger to it. And then there was the camp classic 1966 Batman TV show. <laughs> As fun as the show was, its tongue-in-cheek approach left comic fans with a bad taste. The Joker was portrayed by Latino Lothario Cesar Romero, who famously didn't even shave off his moustache. Uh, when I, you know, took over all the DC characters, including the Batman, in 76, whatever it was, people still thought of it as the TV show, the Cesar Romero um, um, funny clown guy. In the mid-1970s, Steve was brought in to change all this. I was hired by DC to renovate all of their Justice League characters. Um, DC's characters had become sort of icons, but not actual people. And they wanted me to come over and make them people. So I did that with the Justice League, but I said I also wanted to do Batman by himself. Engelhart took over the Dark Knight's adventures with Detective Comics 469 but it was with issue 475 that he finally got his hands on the Joker with a storyline entitled The Laughing Fish. The story starts off with a scheme so zany it could have come from the 1960s TV series. The villain releases a toxin into the water off the eastern seaboard, one that leaves the fish with the familiar eerie grin of the Joker. The next step of his plan sees him stroll into the Gotham Copyright Registration Office and demand a cut of every fish sale in America. When it came time to do my Joker story, I really wanted to do a thing where you could tell that he was crazy, that he had an idea, it made sense to him, you could see how it made sense to him, but you knew it was nuts. They do look like him after all. It's a get-rich-quick scheme that's half ingenious, half insane. And that's where the laughing fish, why fish, why laughing? I, well, laughing because of his face, but I mean, why fish, I don't know. The Joker's copyright claim is quickly dismissed. But that's when things get really scary. He starts working his way up the bureaucratic chain, murdering everyone who stands in his way with the same terrifying Joker toxin. 
These killings are shown in unflinching close-up with the intricate art by Marshall Rogers and Terry Austin capturing every chilling detail. The Laughing Fish re-established the Joker not as playful japester, but a genuinely scary killer. I tend to look at it as like I took the character from zero to 60, and since then people have cranked it up to six million. You know, I mean, he's much scarier and darker and all that than he is, you know, when I did it. But that was the turning point. Now the floodgates were open. During the 1980s, the Joker would kill Robin with a crowbar and shoot and paralyze Batgirl. And by the time Batman returned to the big screen in 1989, that pulp darkness had fully returned. The Joker was portrayed by multiple Oscar winner Jack Nicholson, the same man that had brought to life The Shining's Jack Torrance. Then of course, in 2008, Heath Ledger reinvented the Joker once again. Oh, and Jared Leto played him, but let's not talk about that. Now the Joker is getting to headline his own film, which has already faced criticism, with many feeling that the character shouldn't be portrayed as a hero. Is it possible for the Joker to go too far? That's hard to say. I mean, that's up that's up to the to the reader, right? I mean, the Joker should be scary and he should have that puckishness, you know, that that sparkle of madness in there too. If he's got that, I don't know that there are limits on how crazy or scary or whatever he can be, so long as he's got those two aspects in there. Um, I've been less impressed with the Batman turning into a fascist robot, you know? Can the Joker succeed without Batman? He is the polar opposite of Batman, and so he, I do think he wants the Batman. I think he wants the battle with the Batman. Um, could he work in a Superman story or a Flash story or whatever? I mean, sure, you know, he could, but he would be like a guest star. In The Laughing Fish, he even turns down the option to find out Batman's secret identity. The Joker must have the Batman, he monologues. Nay, the Joker deserves the Batman. Whatever the Joker's future, the Cape Crusader won't be far away.